Fournette. Fournette goes airborne. He's in. Touchdown, Jaguars. Tip and intercepted by Ramsey to close it out. It's over. The Jacksonville Jaguars have pulled off the upset of the playoffs. What is going on, everybody? It is true. From Troop Talks here, and now we are officially 24 hours removed from Super Bowl 53 between the New England Patriots and the Los Angeles Rams. Now, the New England Patriots ended up coming up on top 13-3. to Yes, ladies and gentlemen, the final score was 13-3 to against a Tom Brady-led offense and an offense this year that was in a game against the Kansas City Chiefs in which, for the first time ever, both teams scored at least 50 points. That's unheard of. That's unreal. A lot of people are saying that this is the worst Super Bowl of all time. I was on that train at first of this being the worst Super Bowl of all time. But I've kind of hopped off that bandwagon. And I've decided that this was the most disappointing Super Bowl of all time. And I'm going to tell you why. Ladies and gentlemen, this is why Super Bowl 53 was the most disappointing Super Bowl of all time. So the first reason that made this Super Bowl so disappointing is hindsight because hindsight is 2020 now in the nfc championship game the rams obviously got away with the worst missed pass interference call of all time and the rams went out there jared goff went out there and they scored three points in the super bowl against the patriots and in a perfect world where the saints win that game they go on they probably play the patriots in the super bowl that game is not a 13-3 game. That game's interesting. It's two of the greatest quarterbacks of all time duking it out. Instead, you got the greatest quarterback of all time duking it out against Jared Goff. Now, another reason why this game was kind of annoying and kind of disappointing, yes, Tom Brady has solidified his sixth ring and keeps on, you know, making the petition on why he is the GOAT, and there's no debate. Now, I've always been a Tom Brady's the GOAT kind of guy. And I still think it. There's, you know, there's nothing about this Super Bowl that made me say Tom Brady is not the greatest quarterback to ever play the game of football. And you know, it, people can be like, oh, he's a cheater, this and that. I still firmly believe in my heart that Tom Brady is the greatest quarterback to ever play football. But though he got a six ring, I don't think this Super Bowl helped his legendary status at all. He didn't throw a single touchdown pass. And I think the longest pass he threw was 27 yards. Julian Edelman did more after the catch than he did with the ball. So most of his passing yards for Julian Edelman came after the catch, you know. So Edelman really helped out Tom Brady with his passing yards. Brady didn't even throw a touchdown pass in the Super Bowl. And if I'm not mistaken, that is probably the first time he has done that in uh, all of his nine Super Bowl appearances, not throw a touchdown pass, the only touchdown was from Sony Michelle who busted it in from two yards out after a good pass to Rob Gronkowski so the thing is is that you know you're so used to watching Tom Brady's greatness and the fact that you know he's not going to retire and he puts in this performance at a Super Bowl it's like how downhill is Tom Brady really going I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say he's going downhill because the second you say that about Tom Brady, he's going to go off and he's going to show you, again, why he's the greatest quarterback to ever live. But this game did nothing to help boost that stock, I don't think. With the exception of addition of another ring and making him the most, you know, having the most Super Bowl wins of all time, as far as a player's legacy and what he did in this game, I don't think this win helps his status as the GOAT at all, unfortunately. And now another thing, Sean McVay, who's been probably coach of the year. He didn't win coach of the year, but eh, in my opinion, I think he probably should have won coach of the year. But Sean McVay has orchestrated great game plans and great offensive performances, you know, electrifying offensive performances, scoring 50, I think, three points against the Chiefs to beat him, I think 53-51 or something like that, you know. Being able to do that, going toe to toe with the Saints, beating the Saints eventually in the playoffs, you know, regardless of that, you know, missed pass interference call, I touched on it a little bit, that that missed pass interference call was terrible. And yes, I understand the Saints were in field goal range. They could have kicked the field goal and they could have won the game. But the Saints got the ball first in overtime and they had a posi- they were in position to win the game. Rams got the interception, third line busted a kick through, and 
the Rams went on to go to the Super Bowl. So Sean McVay was able to, you know, take his team through adversity and win the game. And, you know, mostly just offensive highlights, offensive powerhouse. And the Rams come out against the Patriots, who have had a mediocre to bad defense all year long. To put it in perspective, Blake Bortles threw four touchdowns against his defense. Jared Goff, the moment was way too big for Jared Goff. And the thing is, if the Rams were to go on to win the Super Bowl, I don't even know who the MVP would have been. Like, if they didn't knock that last field goal through, and, you know, if they didn't score a touchdown, the final score was like 6-3. to three. Honestly, Hecker might have won MVP for the Rams because there was just no one on the offense or defensive side of the ball that really stood out. And there were some turnovers. There were a couple of turnovers. Stephon Gilmore getting a turnover and the Rams getting a turnover early in the game. But those turnovers, except for the Gilmore turnover, because that, you know, was starting to put the icing on the cake. So that was a big turnover. But for the Rams, man, you have this defensive line. It wasn't touching Tom Brady. This offensive line for the Patriots played tremendous. And, you know, the Rams couldn't get a turnover when it counted. You know, Tom Brady was picking apart zone coverage. And it's like, why even do that? Especially in the Super Bowl against the greatest quarterback of all time. But like I said, I... The, the 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 past game wasn't the reason the Patriots won this game, and that's why I also think it hasn't done anything to solidify more that Tom Brady's the GOAT. I think he's in the same spot he was before he won the Super Bowl. Now that he, after he won the Super Bowl, he's in the same spot that he was before he even won the Super Bowl. And, you know, as a fan perspective, the NFL, let, let, let's stop discussing the game for a second on why it was really disappointing. The NFL promised sweet victory in a way now they didn't come out and say it they didn't but in a way you felt like you were promised to see sweet victory played at the super bowl and what you got was adam levine who is so damn cringy maroon five ruined this whole halftime performance i think travis scott did a good job and big boy did a good job unfortunately travis scott was never going to get a lot of hype or a lot of attention because you know they only played the trumpets at the beginning of the of sweet victories so you know that that was never going to go over well um this halftime for what it could have been being probably the greatest since prince because you know it it was there man it was literally there for the taking you just had to do that you had to let travis scott play sicko mode but not have that sweet victory be the transition to that and you know big boy came out and he did his thing in the in his car you know it was badass people were saying that's the longest drive in the super bowl which which is true and, and you know it was funny but this halftime show was also just a tremendous letdown on what could have been the best halftime show of all time and that made it even more disappointing the lack of scoring and a lot of people are saying oh it was a defensive masterminded game it was a defensive game you don't like to watch defensive games or do you hate defenses was it necessarily a great defensive game or was it a game where just both offenses were tremendously out of sync? Like I said, there were not a lot of turnovers. There were not a lot of sacks. There weren't a lot of explosive defensive plays. Just these teams both struggled on third down. It was almost like they just wanted to give the other team the win because just no explosive plays happened until about a couple two minutes, two minutes and 30 seconds after that Stephon Gilmore interception with Sony Michelle's big runs. You know, nothing explosive happened. I think the Rams ended the game two for 13 on third downs. The Patriots were like four for 13. You know, like they both just could not get it done on third down. I don't really buy into the storyline that this was necessarily an excellent defensive performance. I think just both offenses underachieved. I don't look at this game like a defensive masterpiece from start to finish. I look at it as two offenses that were good all season long, falling apart, and having their defense be the reason that they're still in the game. Now the Rams defense didn't do too much. The Patriots defense also just didn't do too much. I mean, you get a couple of tackles in the backfield every now and again, but I mean, like, there were no big splash plates. Like, if you were watching the Super Bowl by yourself, I wouldn't be surprised if you fell asleep because it was just so boring to watch, man. There was nothing that made you get off your feet 
and really cheer. The only thing I can think of is when C.J. Anderson stiff-armed Dante Hightower. That was the only time me and my friends got up to be like, oh, damn. Like, oh, fuck. You know, there was no Super Bowl moments. This Super Bowl, Super Bowl 53, the 13-3, sixth Super Bowl ring for Tom Brady, helping him establish himself as the GOAT more and more with this victory, has now became the most forgettable Super Bowl of all time. And it might not be the worst Super Bowl of all time because, though it was sort of a defensive, it was an okay defensive effort, I will give you that. But I would rather watch that than the 48-8 to blowout between the Broncos and the Seahawks. I would probably rather watch that. But without a doubt in my mind, if you combine what the game had in mind, what it could have done for Tom Brady's legacy if he put up more stats and just, you know, everything that this game could have been, it wasn't. And that's why this game was the most disappointing Super Bowl of all time. And that was why Super Bowl 53 was the most disappointing Super Bowl of all time. What would you guys think? Leave your comments down below. Don't forget to check the links down below as well. You can like me on Facebook, at Trade Talks. Follow me on Twitter, at Trevon Pixley. Follow me on Instagram, at Trayvon Pixley. Also, if you're feeling oh so generous, you can go ahead and donate on Patreon. That's patreon.com forward slash Trade Talks. Also, if you haven't yet, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Click the bell icon to get notified every single time I drop a new video. I drop new content on this channel five days a week. Ain't nobody out working me. Them just straight facts. And get so much for watching this video. And as always, you guys have a great day.